unboxing it live so that I don't sound biased, but I will say that I love the company and that is Seiko.com, S-E-Y-C-O.com. I am not sponsored by Seiko. I just know a good company when I deal with it. Uh, Ray C. Moore over at Seiko, as well as the guys in the shop are excellent people to work with. They uh, answer any questions. They don't make you feel like a number. They make you feel like you matter and their products are outstanding. I have a Seiko scroll saw. The only reason we're using this one is I already have blades loaded up for it. I am experiencing the Seiko drill for the first time. So we will all open it and critique it together. And I will be honest about it, but I trust it's a good product. But I also know Ray listens to feedback. Let's unbox this puppy. Now for years, I, now most people, if anybody doesn't know me, I tend to cut very large projects is why I wanted this so bad because I've been using a hand drill uh, because most of my pieces are too large for a drill press. So having something like this is ideal. So I'm excited. Sorry, my computer's trying to update while we're doing this or trying to do some other updates. Okay, I'll get into the paperwork later, but at some point it may need to tell me how to operate it because I yeah, it does come with instructions. But I'll start out by just unpackaging it and then we'll uh, go from there. What we have here looks to be different size drill bits. I'll let you know in a second. And uh, some hardware. Box is empty. I'm way more excited about this than I'm letting on, but <laughs> because I've been using a big old bulky corded drill for so long. I appreciate everybody being here. I will acknowledge everybody when we're done with the review portion. And I'll also take questions if, if anybody has any or something they want me to check on it. Let me go ahead and empty this bag and then we'll We'll know what's going on. We have an Allen key. A, uh, I forget the term for that, but we have that. <laughs> we have the chuck, another Allen key. And I did not know they came with uh, these drill bits. So that's a special little treat. I have a razor blade and I'm sitting here trying to tear stuff apart here. So I will, my eyesight isn't real good, so I can't read the label, but we have a whole bunch of, I don't know what size they are. Let me see if I can make it out on the label. It does not say. Let me put those up and we'll open up the other one, see what's in there. They look to be smaller drill bits, but I'll know for sure here in a second. Again, I am not sponsored by Seiko. I'm doing this because I have faith in the company and the man and their policies and everything about the company. But I also am honest with everybody I deal with. Wow, those are those are some tiny drill bits. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, so I did not know those came with that. Obviously, a little special treat, and they probably give you more than one because they are those, you know, used so often for for micro drill bits. Here comes the exciting part. All right, let's. I'll show it from all angles tickled to death about this okay since I haven't looked at the manual yet I don't know what everything is but I will explain it as we go we got this up here <laughs> I should read the manual before I do this but yeah somebody was asking yesterday about a little bitty chuck and it definitely has a little bitty chuck so that's awesome looks to be a power button there it's a push it's a there's no click to it it's just hold on and off and I'm going to test the springing, very good spring mechanism. There's not, you know, I, 
you don't have to push very hard. And I will get more level here in a second. I'm used to doing these live streams from above. So bear with the lack of professionalism on this part. Okay, let's pull this back a little bit. Uh, very easy to go up and down with. And I imagine if that ever binds up, it's just something you would grease. But let's uh, look in the book just to not assume anything about it. Your box should contain the drill unit consisting of the base and the angle adjusting screw. So that's probably the angle adjusting screw is what I didn't know what that was. Plunger guide post with return spring. Plugged into electric wall outlet, 20 drill bits, AC-DC power supply. In the event that the motor is overloaded, the power supply will trip out and need to be reset, okay? The reset is accomplished by unplugging the power supply from the AC wall plug for three minutes. Okay, operation. Select the desired bit size using the chart on page two. And we don't have to mess with that because I'll be using the 116th drill bit. And I'm, I'm reading through this in case there's something I want to share with people as I read it. That's why... It's better to just read it than say, hey, get you one and read it. That doesn't seem fair. Okay. Install it in the drill chuck using the chuck key. Avoid pressing against the chuck excessively. This could eventually cause run out or a slight wobble of the, of the bit. Plug in the power supply. Grasp the plunging block, which is this, this base here. With either your thumb or pointer finger positioned on the push switch, which is right here. Set the drill's base on top of your workpiece. Over the first hole you want to drill, a piece of cardboard under your workpiece will provide space for a bit to come through, yet not damage your work to bench top. Push the switch straight in with your thumb or pointer finger. Push straight down on the plunger as you guide the bit to the intended hole. Uh, and there are guidelines if it needs to be adjusted for any reason. So that's all we needed to read. I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything important. So it is pretty. Now, me personally, I don't know what the purpose of this Unless it's just, you know, holding the whole mechanism. I don't know what, what this is and why it's foam and got a hole in it, but, you know, it could have something to do with the construction of it. So let me get the drill bit in there, and we will plunge our pilot holes. Y'all bear with me. I've got chubby fingers. <laughs> I will catch up on comments and questions after this, I promise. My eyesight is not helping matters here where I'd be a little more organized, but okay. We have the drill bit in there. Let me uh, move these off to the side. And I will. We have to plug it in, you know, because that makes things work. Uh, I feel like an idiot because I don't know where it plugs in. <laughs> we have this thing here and we have a what looks to be a typical power supply cord that's it there i still need to find out where it plugs in on the uh this end here okay what this phone thing is for is to stick your drill bits and allen wrenches and stuff in okay all these other holes are for adjustments if needed it's right there see i'm Okay, I'm down. I'm calling myself an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I just, sometimes I overthink things. So yeah, that's going to go in there. So I just flat overlooked that. So we have, that's where you plug it in. <laughs> I was overthinking. I thought it would be a black port. I'm so used to seeing black ports, never a silver one. So, okay. Now we got to plug this thing in. You know, some might be interested in how loud it is, how deep of a plunge. So we'll, we'll look at those things. I don't imagine it'll be too loud, but you know, even uh, other Rotary type tools are pretty loud, so there's worse problems to have there. Now, rather than using cardboard under it, I'm just going to uh, use this the rest of the uh, cedar here as a waste board underneath. I'm going to test the sound of it. Very quiet. For those that that matters to, I'm going to before I try to actually plunge into this, I'm going to plunge to the side of it to see how deep it plunges based on where I have the drill bit hopefully y'all can see that if no probably not 
Why don't I just turn it sideways and we'll all find out together. Oh, I had my hand over the top of it. That plunge is pretty darn deep. The chuck goes below, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the depth. So I will drill these pilot holes. There, unlike my my designs, uh, there's not fifty thousand pilot holes in here, so that's good. The uh, the cord, you know, if I'm going to find it, the only negative I found so far is this cord's a little heavy, but you know, keep it on the table with you, and that won't be an issue. And I don't even know if we want to call that a negative. It is not a lock on, lock off. It's a hold and release, if that matters to anybody. Okay. I would, I was worried whether or not we would have enough light under there. And I over worried about that because there, I can see clearly under there. Let me get the camera a little bit lower. I was afraid I would have trouble seeing under there, but we're okay. And I'm still getting used to this. I've been using hand drill for so long. You know, if, if money wasn't an object in producing these things, I would love to see a little laser dot, you know, telling me where it's going to land. But, you know, worst problems to have when you just line it up first before you start the drill bit. And I imagine you can clamp this down, and that might be what this hole is for. I just haven't researched all that. So let's do this. Okay, so that tells me we need to be more patient with it. And I didn't adjust it, so it's going to wiggle a little bit. I didn't tighten everything down. That's on me. That's not the product. <sighs> Let me make sure I went through. Yes, I did. And the rest of it, yeah, I just got to pace myself going through. Probably being overly careful. I don't know how, how well y'all can hear anything. I probably should have tightened everything up before I started using it, but uh, it's all right. Now we'll catch up on comments and questions here in a second. Just want to go ahead and drill the pilot holes first. But yeah, asking for a laser dot on here is, is kind of overkill. That's just me being snobby, I guess. But I don't know anybody that does that for a little, a uh, little setup like this. I may have also picked up a somewhat dull drill bit here, but I mean, it's not having any trouble turning. Per the usual, though, I have to be mindful of getting on the pilot holes. That's on me. That has nothing to do with the scroller drill. I'm going through two thick pieces of wood here. Now, I am plunging slower than the average person because I'm still getting used to it. I'm used to a hand drill where I can feel everything right here. I'm relying on, you know, all the feeling is in the block here, not in, not in my hand. And the choice of wood you use is going to make a difference in how, how good it plunges. Let me get that little banner out of the way. Okay. I am, I am going through two thick pieces of wood, although the wood is soft, I may be pushing too hard on it. Because we're not talking about a gigantic, you know, torqued, torqued drill. We're talking about a, you know, a, just a little plunge deal. I could have used another material under this while I was drilling the pilot holes, but I didn't. <laughs> you 
Yeah, it doesn't bind up until I'm going through that second piece of wood. And maybe that laser dot idea was just for my bad eyesight, really. And depth perception. <laughs> my depth perception is terrible. And I don't have anything to compare this to as far as like Dremel and stuff like that because I've never used a Dremel for something like this. No, there is, I, I don't want to call any of this a learning curve, but when you're used to putting your body weight behind it when you're using a hand drill, it is taking getting used to not pushing this thing too hard because when, when you're used to a hand drill or a, uh, a drill press that has a lot of torque behind it, this is uh, something to get used to. It sounds like it's binding up, but it's not. Uh, it's not slowing down the drill bit at all. I'm watching that. I'm going deeper than I need to just to make sure I'm getting through the thick wood because I'm not used to dealing with thick wood. If anybody's here for the first time, I hope you'll consider subscribing and clicking on that bell. I do mainly uh, scroll sawing live videos and project videos. I try to teach now and then. Definitely a sense of humor and entertainment. Let's see, that was much softer, so I think it's just the area of the wood we're in. Now again, it comes with Allen wrenches and other things for adjustments, but I rushed right into doing this. I mean, this movement right here is probably just an adjustment needing tightened because there's, you know, there's Allen wrench holes on the sides for adjustments. I just didn't bother with that because I was too excited about using it for the first time. At first, I was wondering if I was going to be bugged by the fact that this power button doesn't stay on, but I'm not bugged by it at all because, you know, there's, there's you don't have to bear down on it, you know, hit it with a pinky, you know, so there's that. It's not a real loud tool like uh, a Dremel can be, if that matters to people. You don't need earplugs to use it. Now, because of the fact that I usually use a drill press or a, a big hand drill, I wouldn't mind a little more torque here, but it hasn't bound up yet because I keep watching that that uh, that chuck to see if it slows down or anything. You obviously want to make sure you're on a level surface and that the material you're plunging into is level, you know, because that's what guarantees the 90 degrees if you're going for that. Most people don't go this slow when they're drilling pilot holes. Y'all, y'all see me on past live feeds when I'm drilling the pilot holes. I'm going down to nothing, but, but that's because I'm used to using hand drill. But hopefully, y'all can hear that motor enough to know that it's not binding up. It's the the muffling you're hearing is because it's going into thick wood. Although soft, it is still thick. Again, that chuck is not slowing down. Again, this particular pattern we're working on is from Steve Good, Scroll Saw Workshop .com. It is a free pattern. I don't remember the measurements, but they're there. He has two different sizes. This is the larger of the two. The Seiko SC21 uh, dust collection, the foot switch, the scroller's drill, and other products I can't think of because I'm multitasking. You can be found at Seiko.com. S-E-Y-C-O. Dot com. I'm not getting paid to do this. I'm not sponsored by him. This is all me showing y'all. Now, while I'm cutting this with the scroll saw, I will, I will try to do some, uh, I want to use the word teaching, but I don't know what I can say beyond how to use a spiral, but that is what I'm choosing to use to cut this. 
spirals or number threes and number fives are all I ever use are spiral blades. They're flat ended. They're flying Dutchman and I get them from woodenteddybear.com. It doesn't need a laser dot because there's plenty of uh, light under there. I was afraid there wouldn't be because I hadn't seen it in person. So I thought it would be, I thought it'd be much lower down. So I'm happy with how open it is. I, I'm happy with how, how deep it plunges. Uh, not happy with myself that I didn't, you know, adjust and tighten because that you have the tools to do that. It comes with them. There's no money being exchanged for this review. No, uh, no bribes, no, no nothing. But I, I was excited to get it and I trust the man and the company and the quality, which is why we did this. And so now y'all have seen everything and Aiko is Ray Seymour, and if the shop guys are still the same, they are Tim and Joe.